Here are three Airtable best practices that will allow you to build complex automations and complex systems. Even if your business is doing 100K, a million a month, you have multiple steps in your process, just set it up like this. It'll save you a ton of hassle in the long run. So what we're looking at is a part or part of a, an Airtable system that I'm, that I'm building for at a, an SEO agency. They do just over 100K per month. They do, you know, hundreds of articles per month. They manage 20 something, 50 something clients at a time. And uh, the Tino team is about 10 people. So three things. Number one, whenever you're gonna have probably like a status dropdown or like a completion state dropdown for each project, each video you have, each, uh, each piece of content, each article, whatever your unit is, and a lot of people, what they do is they have a drop down that says like, you know, to do in progress and done, or uh, you know, the editing is is being is is being done, the script is being done, the thumbnails done, it's published, something like that, right? What you're gonna do instead, because you are smarter, is you're gonna put a number in front of the status, okay? So you see how it says, you know, one, zero, 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 one, zero, two, 10, 11, whatever. Okay, so you're gonna put a number, a couple things. You're not gonna use a one digit number. You're always gonna use two digits. So zero, one, zero, two, 10, 11, something like that. The reason you don't do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 is because undoubtedly during your development process, you're going to have to insert new steps in the process, right? Because you wanna track more more uh, nuanced steps. So if you do one, two, three, four, five, and all of your steps are in order like that, the second you insert a new step in the middle, it breaks all of your code. So what you're gonna do is space them out. Typically, I like to space them out in groups of, in, in chunks of 10, right? And I change, you know, the initial step, you know, zero, zero is like the initial one. Normally what I use is everything zero to nine is the initial project manager is responsible for it. It has to be sent somewhere. Maybe it's a YouTube script and it has to be assigned to a script writer or a video planner. Maybe it's an article and it has to be sent to the appropriate writer. It's a landing page it has to be assigned to somebody. So normally zero, zero is like as new, negative one typically is like canceled. Uh, one is maybe it's been sent to a person and we think that person will say yes but they haven't confirmed it yet. And then it goes to 10 once that person actually says, yes, confirmed, I'll do this, right? The reason we go in chunks of 10 like this, and again, it would be the same thing from 10 to 19 and from 20 to 29, is because you can then write code and say, well, if the status number is between 10 and 19 and this event is due at this time and that hasn't happened yet, send reminders to the person that's assigned to that chunk of uh, steps, okay? If you do one, two, three, four, five, you also have to do really crazy logic to make sure that the reminders go to the right person. But if you have this state like that, this just makes everything else easier. Your logic, your um, your visualizations, right? You can have like a funnel uh, diagram of this and visualize it and chunk it by groups of 10. It just makes everything else easier. So do yourself a favor, do it in two digit groups, chunks of 10. One of the things I typically do is I'll use the nine, eight, seven steps for quality problems in the, in the, in the found in the next step. So if you have a video, you have maybe the video editing step is one step and that video editor submits it for a quality check. So maybe some, maybe 30 to 39 is the editing, but then 40 is the quality check. If the quality check passes, it goes from 40 to 50. If the quality check fails, it goes from 40 to 39 because now it's back in the responsibility of the editor, but it's already mostly started. So it's mostly done. This way we can track things like estimated workload really well. So do yourself a favor. If you set it up like this with the two digit numbers and groups of 10, your life will be 10 million times easier. The second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have some messages to let the user know what to do next or what the status is of this particular thing. Maybe it's, you know, we're waiting for some configuration to happen manually. Maybe there's some kind of error. So what I always do is I have two other columns, error message and status message. 
um, that sometimes the error, the status message includes the error message. And the way I do this is based on an internal state number. So yeah, you could have status messages that are simply based on um, the, the text and have your code write text. The problem with your code writing text is that if you ever wanna make your error messages or your status messages more helpful or add in intermediate steps, your code all breaks. So what I do is my make scenarios or my automation scenarios set and read from this internal state rather than writing the text. And then on the Airtable display, I have the a, a switch statement where it's a number and then based on the number, it, it displays certain text. This way, if I ever wanna make the error messages or status messages more helpful, I can change this text here and every single article, in this case, there's 2,600 of them. There's almost 3,000 articles. Every single article that's in that state immediately has that new message updated and all of a sudden the users just have a much easier time, right? Why is this good for you as an automation person or somebody building the system? Because if a user doesn't understand it, they will ask you because you built it and you don't want that to happen. So that is number two. Always, always, always have this internal state field in Airtable, make it an integer and then have a switch statement looking up what error message or status message to display. The third thing you're gonna do as a best practice is you're gonna have error codes. So you see how there's error three, error three A, like scroll down here, this is like 105, 114, 110, right? All these ones. So this one, for example, we have error 110 and error 112. Why do I put these error numbers here rather than just having text? The reason we put the error numbers here and you should do the same thing is because you're gonna have documentation for your users. Your users are gonna go, hey, like this error happened and I don't know what to do. And this will especially be relevant when you have 2000 articles produced through this system in the space of a couple of months. People will forget things. There's, there's uh, for example, there's, Okay, there's 23 different error states or things that can, that can go wrong in this system, right? This system is checking articles. So we're checking, is the H1 tag there? Are all the links in the article not pointing to 404? Uh, are all the links or any of the links redirected to somewhere else? Do the links use the right anchor text? Um, is there one article in, in the group like missing? Like there's 23 different states here, right? Everything from like, hey, the, the Google Docs link that you provided like wasn't an actual Google Docs link. So if you only have documentation that's based on the error message, when you make the error message a little bit different to make it more helpful to people, all of a sudden your documentation is all out of date. So do yourself a favor, make an error code and then you can create documentation that has more descriptions based on this error code. And you can change what pops up in here in terms of the message, the user to make that more helpful. And when you do that, it doesn't break all your documentation. Your, your documentation is still helpful. It's still to date or it's still up to date. That's the one. So I hope you enjoyed this little air table tutorial. Uh, if you have a complex business system that you just want us to automate for you and make sense of it for you, there's going to be links below this video. You can book a call and we will talk to you about your system. And that is all. Now, I hope you guys have a great day.